Hi, and welcome to the Max Revenue Show. I'm your host, Max Revenue. In this episode, we introduce you to the Million Dollar One Sheeter. It's literally one sheet of paper and five bullet points, and it's the only thing you need to present to prospects. You can take your fancy slide decks, your big binders full of all this technical stuff, and you can throw it out the window. You're doing it wrong. You've made it way too hard. Listen to this episode and let Michael walk you through how he presents in this one sheet of paper and the little bit of information he has on it. It's the only thing that you need to go win BRs and write new business. So without further ado, let's get into it. Well, tell me the origin story of the one sheeter. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I was working for a direct writer, you know, got into insurance and we had these big, long proposals that were generated, you know, like you guys have seen them, right? Page after page, all the coverage information. <clears throat> and anyways, um, one of the successful guys, I don't even know who it was, was like, hey, I've been using one sheet, kind of one page, just going there with one page. And it's worked really well. So that's kind of the origin of it. Um, and I just started doing it. And I was like, oh, this is way better. Because so what I did, I would show up to the meeting and I would say, Hey, I got this one piece of paper or we can go through this whole thick <laughs> log <laughs> proposal. And 99% of the time they said, let's go to the one page. And so I let the client choose. I think that's so important. This, was, this was more like new business or even yeah, the, uh, renewal presentations. This isn't your, you've then taken that now and then adapted it to like your BOR presentation. Correct. Yeah, so these were new business presentations, but you have to remember I was working for a direct writer, so I, was, I had to quote everything, right? So, um, but yeah, I've taken that and adapted it to the one pager that I've now used for pitching BORs, you know, and why to get hired essentially. Gotcha. So I think you had, uh, I, th I think you had an interesting story for me that I cut you off on in the <laughs> car ride over here that you were going to tell me. What's that? Yeah, it's, it's funny to think about, but this is going way back, probably, you know, my first year out there selling or second year when I started doing this one page thing. What I did, I noticed this one machine shop had a terrible business interruption uh, limit and they had, you know, very uh, bad wording, essentially, just kind of that would have put the business out of business. And so the guy didn't know this. And this is just to take one step back. This is why having a research call and conversations with your prospects is so critical because you're, you're setting yourself up, right? You're not spewing all the things that you're just asking questions. You're learning more in those meetings. And when you come back to present, this is where you, this is where you shine, right? Where all that knowledge you extracted, you combine that with the solutions you have or the different ideas and you come up with some creative strategies and this is how you set yourself apart. So anyways, back to the story. Um, I, I go Google a picture of a burnt down building and uh, proceed to print it off <laughs> with just a question over the, over the picture. And I said, you know, what would you do if this was your building? And that's how, we, that's how I started the presentation. So I, I show them the picture and I say, hey, what would you expect to do? And I start walking through so you'd expect your insurance to pay. Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd call my agent. I just said, walk me through what you'd expect to happen. I'd call my agent. I definitely need a check. Oh, how much would that cost you? Well, we'd be out of business. So you start, start to get them to actually – quantify the pain, you know? Well, then I say, great to hear. I said, what, do, what would you do if I told you that right now, if, if this happened to you, you would get a check for X, you know, which was a fraction of what he needed. How would that make you feel? He's like, pissed off. I'd fire my guy. I said, All right. I said, well, good news and bad news. I said, you're going to have to fire your guys. The <laughs> is the bad news. Good news. You get to hire me. So um, anyways, it was just funny. I used, I used that picture a couple times and I had just thought of it. We were, you and I were talking this morning and I was, I totally had forgotten about that because I hadn't really done that in several years, but um, it's funny. So, so you could actually works. take the million dollar one sheeter and actually even boil it down from the five bullet points to just a picture of a burnt down house. Is that what I'm? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if that's the, yeah, I mean, after, obviously you audit the policy, if you find, an issue that could be summarized and encapsulated in a picture by all means, you know, go for it. Or they say a picture speaks a thousand words. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, 
Have so, fun with this, man. Have fun with this game. Yeah, so, and, and shame on me for not doing a better job of setting the table, but basically, you know, the, the whole context behind the million-dollar one-sheeter, it's how, and I learned this from Micah, it's how we present um, basically the findings of our due diligence review. So just to back up a little bit, we cold call in or cold email or whatever you want, walk in. We get that, you know, we get the first meeting. First meeting, we come in, get to know them, get to learn more about their business, get copies of their policies, you know, whatever you can get your hands on, uh, but at least have to have copies of policies. Maybe get some, uh, you know, if you don't want to pull loss history and alert the other agent, maybe at least just get some details on it. Then we go back to the office. As we go through the policies, obviously, we're going to have more questions that arise. So usually we do, you know, some type of 20 to 30 minute phone call, continuing this due diligence process to get some clarification on other things that might pop up. Then we set our BOR presentation. We go in, boom, one sheet of paper. Um, everything that we want to cover is on it. And it's basically five bullet points. The first is a coverage review the good, the bad, and the ugly of the policy. Uh, and I know when, I, actually, I'll circle back to that. So number one, coverage review. Number two is a rate review, basically how they compare to their competition. Benchmarking, another fancy word uh, to I'll say. Let me, ch let me chime in here too on the rate review because a lot of people would probably wonder, well, how do I get rates, blah, blah, blah. If you don't have benchmarking software, if you're not a huge agency and you don't subscribe to that, one thing I really like to do is... Um, you know, if you, wherever your agency's at, maybe you have some other clients in that space. This is why niching does help. Let's say you, you know, niche down into mechanical contractors and you know you insure four others, right? Well, you can just, you don't share the names of the clients with this prospect, but you just pull their rates. You know, look up in your agency system, you know, some clients you have and see their GL rate, look at their work comp rate, their auto per vehicle rate. And again, this is a conversational piece. So at this bullet point, and sorry, Max, if I totally derailed you, but I just wanted to make hit on this is, you know, you're not promising the sun, the moon, the stars, and we're going to save you 25%. You're just pointing out objectively, this is where you compare and, or here's what I'm seeing in the market, you know? So um, anyways, you pull those rates and I would just put them on a table a lot of times and say, here's you and here's a company, a B and C these, and you know, I'd put the, the basically high level size of the company so they could kind of see how they compare. And that would that could be eye opening, right? Or it could just confirm they're in a good spot. Um, which hey, then then they know that. Uh, now, if you don't even have that, make some calls to underwriters. If you have wholesale brokers who are friends, whatever the case would be, just put some feelers out there, right? Call people in your marketing department um, and try to get a sense for how those rates compare. Um, and then, if you've been doing this long enough, you kind of get a sense if you're in the market of of you know. Hey, this auto rate looks really high. Why are you at twenty thousand a vehicle when you should be at fifteen thousand? Right, that just seems off to me. And you know, with a client you're promising you're anything, you're just sharing your observations and your thoughts. Yep, gotcha. So let me hit all five bullet points, and then we'll come back and kind of touch on each one. If you're good with that, that works. Sorry, son of a bitch. All right, I was so, just so passionate about rate, I I talk about it. <laughs> this guy loves the one cheater. All right, so number one, coverage review. Number two is rate review. Micah touched on that. Number three is a marketing review, where it was marketed, maybe what was missed. Number four is new ideas uh, to improve their program, risk, whatever you want. Um, and then number five is service team. And um, now let's just circle back to the top. So I have actually seen one of your one-sheeters. Uh, I have since adopted it myself. Uh, but just talk through each one. So let's start at, you know, bullet point one, the coverage review. What what is what does that look like? What, what are all are you putting in there? Yeah, and I, I'm not going overkill on this because I'm not the person trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. And I tell the client that when they agree to the due diligence, I'm saying, hey, if I think something's an issue, I'll point it out to you and I'll let you know, like the severity of the issue. So if, if it's a quick fix, but I don't think it's fireable, I'll just put it in there and say, hey, you know, I'll lead with the, the big points. Here's the three big things I found that could put you out of business possibly. And maybe there's nothing to talk about at this point. Um, but then I said, here's some minor things. Again, is this fireable? That's that's for you to figure out. But what you're kind of doing is, even if it's not one fireable offense, you're kind of creating 
you know, as an agent, our work, part of our work or how we show um, our expertise in, is, is how accurate we program a policy and, and do things, right? Pay attention to the details. So I would say for you agents listening out there, if you think, oh, I got nothing here, I found nothing. Those, I just found some minor things. Those minor things can create some doubt in the client's mind, you know, like, oh, wow, he missed that and this, and I never see the guy, you know, so it starts to add up. So that's what I would say on this point though. Yeah. I don't go in the weeds on the coverage. I just kind of, and then I like to also, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of this, you give the client the option. So here's the full blown analysis. If you want me to go through it, or here's a one pager, you know, and usually they'll always lend to the one pager. Now, if you want to provide some supporting documentation, this is the spot to really do that when you're talking coverages. If you find a major exclusion, print that thing out. Bring, bring it to that meeting. Nothing better than that. Um, highlighting it, circling it, whatever you got to do to show it. You know, I So I do like to pr- show the documentation within their own policy of where I found the issues as well. Sure. And two things I'll say with that is... Um you know, potentially bring some case studies with you. Let's say they have a particular exclusion in their, I don't know, GL, like a classification exclusion, you know, and they're like, eh, you know, not really a big deal. It, it's good to bring case studies and show them like, hey, no, actually it could be a big deal. He'll, here's an example of X, Y, and Z of how this has played out and it cost another business so much. And um, you can just use old Google for that or go to, you know, one of the carriers, and they usually have a lot of examples of, you know, different case studies on things like that. And then the other thing I was going to say, you were talking about if you don't actually really find a lot of big stuff, when you actually communicate that to them, that also builds trust because they're used Absolutely. to people coming in and trying to burn the house down. Uh, no pun intended to your earlier story. But when you do <laughs> actually when you do actually come back and say, hey, you know, it's not that bad. I, I found these few things. But all in all, your coverage is okay. That, that, that actually builds trust because maybe they have a service issue or maybe they have a rate issue, but the fact that you're actually being honest with them and you're not trying to burn the house down, uh, it's going to build trust. Okay. So now onto the second bullet point rate review. I think we covered that pretty good. Wouldn't you say? Yep. I think we, we hit the nail on that one. And then number three was marketing review just to um, elaborate. Yeah, elaborate on that. I will real quick. I had a a question this morning that came about that marking review, and he's like, "How do you know where somebody did or didn't go?" Great and question. I said, and I, yeah, I said, "Well, just call the underwriter and ask them. They'll they'll tell you whether they got a submission or not." So run with that. Tell me how you go through that. Yeah. So this is something I actually started implementing a little bit later on, and more recently. Uh, so one thing I ask for up front when I'm saying, Hey, here's what the due diligence process looks like. Here's what I need. One of the pieces of information I like to get is last year's proposal. So of course I like the full policies, but I also want the proposal. Now within that proposal, guess what? If I don't see marketing results, well, that's actually a red flag, right? Because now I go back to that client and now it opens up a whole can of worms. So when I do my marketing review, big, Hey, here's the markets. So essentially what the marketing review is, here's the markets I think are the top for your business. Have you seen quotes from them or what's your experience been like when talking with them? You know, they've been the hottest in your industry for this, this location. So it's just a really good conversation starter. Um, and if I notice they're missing, if they weren't on last year's list, I'll point that out big. I noticed that this company, this company wasn't on there. Have you ever seen quotes from them? Cause maybe two years ago, three years ago, and they're like, no, I never have. Um, and then, like I said, also, if, if the list is missing altogether, the marketing results aren't in that proposal, then it leads me to believe what's the broker hiding, right? Or you guys not have a renewal strategy meeting? Do they not go through the list? I mean, how do you know that this is the best? Well, they just tell me, you know, so again, this is all, um, you're not sitting there bashing the broker, but you're just bringing up things that you do differently and why you should be hired. Because again, if to get a BOR, you're not hiring, getting hired on price. You're trying to get hired based on professionalism, service, you know, the advisement you're bringing in. And this is another way to do that. So this is a huge opportunity um, where I think a lot of you guys are just missing it. And uh, and I was going to add one little piece to that. And I, I can't remember right now. But anyways, yeah. So from a marketing standpoint, um, don't miss out on this. Ask for that, Doc. And, and then, oh, to your point, Max, that's what I was going to say. Underwriters, the, the, the underwriter who is incumbent, right, who's on that account that you're trying to win, isn't going to talk to you. Maybe they will, but I highly doubt it. The guys, 
you know, the other markets will most likely, they can't give you maybe all the details, but they'll tell you if they've ever seen a submission on it. And they'll also tell you when the last time they got a submission is, and usually they'll spill, here's why we didn't get it. And yep. you might be able to extract out of that conversation. Yeah. We feel like the broker's in bed with XYZ company. We don't even ever get a fair shot. It's been terrible, you know, or we, we just stopped quoting it because it's the last five years we wasted our time. Well, guess who wants to know that information that's not getting to know that your buyer, <laughs> you share that. I mean, that's, that's huge. So, yeah, and I know, you know, also uh, you can take this information to actually make sure you are including a marketing report in your proposal if you are the incumbent. Because if you're not, you're leaving the door open for somebody like Micah to come in and, you know, throw doubt on your client. I know the, I've, I've seen a number of proposals, um, and I know a lot of people don't include a marketing report. So, just because you don't, if you are the start uh, doing it, and yeah, tell your, you, if your agency doesn't do it, just put your own piece of paper and put it on the report or tell your team to do it. And they should, they should do it. Um, yes. And if you don't approach certain markets still, you know, let's say you don't want to burn the markets out. Right. And so this is a year, you know, you, you negotiate an early renewal and you like the numbers and you and your client in your pre-renewal meeting decide that you're not going to go burn all the markets this year, at least make sure you include that in there. You know, hey, here's a marketing report for this year. We kept it with the incumbent carrier. Remember, we discussed X, Y, and Z. So that way it's actually, you know, in writing. That way they can't come back and use that against you uh, in the future. So that's a really good point to yeah. use that. Buyers have Buyers have short memories. So... To Max's point, you will talk, you have a pre renewal strategy meeting where you go over the markets you're going to go to and the ones you're not going to go to and why. <laughs> then you come back at renewal proposal. Guess what? When you're marking your results, yeah, say where you went. And, and that's a great idea, Max. Actually, say where you even didn't go. Hey, we didn't go here, here, and here. Just remember, you know, that we didn't go there because blah, blah, blah. We approached them the last two years. We're taking a break. So, you know, buyers have sh really short memories. Quick story, and then we'll get back. Is I had a new client I picked up via BOR using a one pager uh, from October. Well, I had to call him on something like last uh, two weeks ago, and he's like, "What are prices here? You know, I thought it was going to be here." I'm like, "No, no, no. Remember, <laughs> we talked yeah. about it. The price is here." And anyways, the guy had already forgotten three months later what we talked about. And I get it. You're running a business; it's tough. So. Yeah, and then and then fast forward six months, nine months after your renewal, that client's definitely not going to remember what you discussed, not only nine months before when you brought them the proposal, but the three or four months before that when you had your pre-renewal <laughs> strategy meeting. So get it in writing. Just, yeah, and then reiterate, just wait till reiterate, have a reiterate, reiterate, <laughs> communicate. Yep. Wait till All right, they have so a point, Yeah, that's true. Bullet point number four: new ideas to improve their program. Um, you know, expound upon that. How do you, how do you typically tackle that? Yeah, this is the fun part, man, where you get to be creative, uh, think outside the box. It doesn't have to be resources your agency provides. Those are great though. If you have, you know, loss control guy that you could put in here, Hey, <coughs> you know, March 31st or March of 2023, we're going to have our loss control guy, give you a call, set up, you know, sign you up for our uh, learning management system, or maybe they're going to come out and meet with you and pick one topic for the year that they want to talk to you about. Um, we're not going to try to, we're not going to be your full-time safety consultants, but let's just pick one topic where we can, as an agency partner with you, you know? Um, so it could be that it could be diving into claims, setting up a claims action plan. And this is where you really have to rely on those research conversations that you're having with your client. Right. Um, and, and you're, Whatever they're talking about, you got to figure out what's important to them during that call because that's setting up this comeback. That's why it's more than just getting policies and reviewing and coming back and sharing what you find in a policy. That's not going to help get you the BUR. You got to be extracting other information not related to just insurance policies. You know, related to the overall experience or their business overall. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, get creative. What what pain points did they have? You know, and if it's something that you directly can't help with, you could even put on here like. Hey, you had mentioned you're having issues with, uh, you know, lawyers, you know, I did some digging for you. Actually, I found, uh, I asked a client who they use for their attorney and here's a, a, a person I'd like to put a lunch on our calendar next year, you know, so whatever ideas you can come up with, um, 
put them in here. The, it's going to set you apart big time. Um, you know, for example, I just had a research call with a really large electrical contractor, probably the largest in Texas. And um, he had mentioned subcontractors and he really cleaned that up. They buttoned that up. Carriers were happy. And I said, well, how are you managing that? Well, he's like, all by hand, you know, just every year. And, and there's companies out there, trust layer, I'll drop their name. I know is one, um, but there's others that help can help clients manage COIs a lot more effectively and efficiently. So now I didn't tell the guy that in that call, but I made a mental note, put it on paper. And, you know, I'm going to get the policies and start doing the review. That's going to be one of the things I'm going to talk about. So that's, that's what this whole part is about. It's just different ideas to help their business. Maybe different things you're seeing clients do. Hey, hey, I got another guy that does this. Have you ever thought of that? You know, I wanted to just bring that up to you. So, um, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Them. So yeah. trust, trust layer, you said. Yeah, it's uh, you can just, you know, if you're listening, Google them. Um, they're, they're for larger clients. Like you gotta be issuing a lot of certs and managing, it helps managing us COIs, uh, in an automated fashion that, that de-risks it for them essentially. Cause all, there's a lot of risk in managing COIs, but I'm not gonna go down that trail for you guys listening. No. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just, I'm writing it down. And then I'm also saying trust layer as many times as I can. Uh, and then I'm going to tag them, um, when I post this, that way they will, um, sponsor the podcast and or newsletter. So trust layer, go check them out. <laughs> Such a capitalist. What a capitalist you are, Max. Cap capitalist pig. Um, one more thing I'll add to that. And, and maybe we'll, you know, add this after maybe number five, the service team. I really like doing a service calendar, um, an ideal service calendar, especially if somebody I feel like is been underserved by their agent. So maybe this is something you could add, you know, not necessarily that you would include it on your one sheeter, but as a separate paper that you would show to them. Like maybe your bullet point for new ideas is like, hey, here's my ideal service calendar. Sounds like you've been underserved from your previous agent because X, Y, and Z. And then maybe that's something else you could hand to them. Um, so anyways, so yeah, number five is service team. Tell me what the thinking is behind that. Well, this is, you know, I will say I learned this at my former agency. Um, they taught us a presentation style that was them, us, fit, action, right? And I liked that thought process because you're starting with all about the prospect. Or the, you know, you're making it all about them. And if you look at the one pager, that's kind of the, what I'm following, that, that, you know, order of things. So here, here's the part about us. This is where I kind of talk about how my agency is different, how, how I am different. And I think that's critical. There's a difference between you, the agent, and the agency. Uh, I think most of the decision at this point is going to weigh on who are you, the agent, but you also have a capable team behind you. So, you know, highlight your team that you have working with you. Anything that's just different, you know, for my agency, we're an ESAP, 100% employee owned. Everybody you work with is going to have skin in the game. Uh, everyone down from the receptionist to the marketing person, they all want to see us win. You know, they do better when you do better. So that's, that's, something I talk about, right. But it's going to depend on your agency. Maybe you're, you're just a really good local agent. You know, you, you have the best relationships, whatever the case is, this is where you kind of brag about yourself and you kind of, you know, yeah, this is what, this is where you do that. You don't lead with all that. Hey, we've been in business 70 years. And even then I wouldn't say that I do that at this point. If I say we've been in business 70 years, I say, because of that, you, why does that matter to the client? That's where you kind of, you can highlight that uh, here as well. You know, we've been around for, seven years, we got really, really strong relationships. No one can compete. You know, and that means better pricing for our clients. So I always bring it yep. back to the client, what's in it for them. Even when you're talking about your agency history, you know, I'm not saying that's not important. It's just the way you communicate that matters because well, I, I don't care actually, if you've been in business 70 years, you know? I, I, yeah. I'll actually, I will kind of, um, I will give you a contrarian take on that. I don't actually think anybody gives a damn that your business has been in you know, for 70 years, or at least 99% of people don't, unless you can spin a story off of it. I don't think anybody cares. I think people ultimately hire you, not a logo. You know, I coming from one of the big boys, you know, they feed you the gate or not Gatorade. They feed you the Kool-Aid and why we're the best. And, you know, we're this, that, and the other. And, and frankly, I, I have never been hired one time because of the logo that I worked for or really the story about us that we told they're hiring you as a person, right? They want, I don't, I don't know the story behind my CPA firm. I don't know the story behind my general counsel. You know, I don't, I don't know any of that, nor do I care. It's, it, it's just, can the person solve a problem that I have? Are they competent? Are they going to answer their phone when I call? Um, 
at the end of the day, you care way more about your agency story than they do. And, and maybe somebody, you know, a lot of you guys will disagree out there, but I'll tell you, man, stop drinking the Kool-Aid, just sell yourself, not the logo on your shirt. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I would, I would agree with that for the most part um, to certain buyers that are brand buyers, but I was at yeah, the biggest as well. And certainly there was larger companies who didn't have a clue who we were. <laughs> They're like, who's that? Right. I'm like, oh, number one in the world. Oh, never heard of them. Okay. And that happened way more than you'd think. Um, I think it's important. I'll chime in here with a personal story, right? And it's why are you different than other agents out there personally? You know, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, for me, it's like, hey, I was trained for one year. I, I got to see behind the, the the curtain of how an insurance company operates, how people are underwritten, how loss control works, how claims work. I take all that knowledge and I basically give you that. It, I, I'm like your insider, right? So however you want to spin um, and sell kind of your story, just just think, th- think through that. I think it's it, it will help you when you get to this point uh, in the presentation. But again, hopefully, if you lead with it's all about them, again, this part is pretty much like, you know, I'm not just sitting here talking for hours about our agency or myself. This is still a minimalistic part of the conversation. And this is where I kind of let them ask me questions, right? And that's usually a good sign like, oh, how many years have you been in business? And, you know, they'll, they'll kind of ask you that question if they care about it. So as to Max's point, this is where you talk about like, again, what's in it for them. So, okay. Um, you know, you have a designated service person. Her name's Susie. She's going to crush it for you. Here's why she's got 20 years of experience. Okay. You know, you're just basically saying that if they go with you, they don't have to worry. Um, but I wanted to bring up one thing, Max, the whole point of this one pager is to keep it super conversational. That's the whole point of the one pager. Because sometimes you get bogged down and like flipping through the the PowerPoint, even if it's printed off or it becomes like boring to them. I, I just feel like the buyers that you're talking to, um, even if it's a CFO or a C-suite or an owner, they're not really programmed to want to see a bunch of details at this point. They just want to know high level what the issues are and if you can solve them. And, and hopefully throughout the process, they get a way better feel for who you are. And then when you get to this very end point, we're talking about now, like your agency and your service, they already get a sense for, man, I like this guy. I could work with him. I could hire him. You know, if they don't have that sense at this point, they're not hiring you. Yeah, no, totally agree. And that kind of goes into what we talked about in the newsletter that came out uh, last week. If you haven't read it, Go max read revenue, it. max revenue letter dot beehive dot com. And it's basically it's the concept of exactly what you're saying, keeping things simple and concise. Uh, there's a book that I read a couple of months ago, uh, Pitch Anything by Oren Klepp. It's the um, best book I've ever read uh, pertaining to sales. Can't recommend wow. it enough. Go read it. Um, but basically the whole concept is this behind the book. And then also kind of behind the one sheeter is when someone is approached with something new, or especially something that's complex, like you're talking about the CFO and he's got, you know, a 50 page presentation in front of him before, like the brain is basically broken up into three different spots. And the first thing anybody comes to is, is our, basically our fight or flight. It's, um, I, I think the name of it is like the basal ganglia or what people call the croc brain. But basically before it even goes to the higher parts of the brain, this is like the triage center where it's immediately trying to detect danger. Do I run? Do I stay? Like, what do I do here? And and if you're giving too much information all at one time, the brain's checking out, you know, you probably, you know, I don't know whether you're buying a car or, you know, whatever it is, you've probably been in a sales situation where, you know, someone is sitting there and just it's verbal diarrhea and it's just impossible to process. Or you've sat in on a presentation and there's a 40 page slide deck and you're like, Oh my God, this is mind numbingly boring. Um, (laughs) Your, your crock brain, you've got to get past that first before anybody can actually get to um, more of their processing center. So you got to get past that initial part. Um, And that's one of the things that this cleft guy talks about in his book in presenting presentations, pitching, selling, prospecting, whatever you're doing, it's got to be simple to start. Crock brain loves new. It loves simple. It loves succinct. It does not like boring, complex, mundane, so just take it into account uh, when you're presenting. And I think um, you actually came up or 
adapted this idea without even knowing that, right? I don't think you've ever even read the book, but they play together real well. So I, you know, I thought it made sense to kind of combine them in the newsletter this week. So take that into account when you're presenting. Good stuff. Yeah, no, I, for those who have not read the newsletter, you're missing out. Go read it. It's ex excellent. This, this week's what you write, Max, I can't take any credit. And just again, as a reminder, I am not Max Revenue, for those who still don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Micah does the video. He does YouTube and anything where we need like a bright, shiny face. Uh, but yeah. I have, you know, I'm wearing eye patch and I'm just a big ogre. So I do the words. I do the page. Yeah, it's like paper. People think people think I have that much time on my hands to literally pretend like I'm max revenue <laughs> and myself and then comment on my own posts like my own posts. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> dude, like, do you think I have a like serial killer? I mean, or. I don't know. It's just funny to me. But anyways, um, yeah, no, that was an excellent newsletter. I think you hit the nail on the head with the croc uh, and keeping it simple. Um, it's, nope. it's very, very true. All right. Well, let's end it here. You good with that? Yeah. I don't want to, just like you said, let's, let's end this before people just doze off. Yep. Uh, if they have by now, then we didn't do a very good job of uh, targeting the croc brain. So um, go check out the newsletter maxrevenueletter.beehive.com we have a YouTube channel that's now up and rolling where Micah is giving us all of his insights and wisdom from a decade in plus in the insurance industry and then well, you can also you obviously if you're listening to this I don't need to send you to our podcast uh, because you already know where to find it so with that we appreciate you listening and uh, we'll catch you next week